Good morning, Bante. Good morning. Ah. Many Bhavana I got. Okay. Good morning, Bhante. Good morning. Good morning. Today I am uh, giving my talk in different location. And, uh, so you don't see the background, but uh, it's okay. Uh, good talk on uh, uh, what you call Padhana Sutta, that is uh, striving. Striving is also one of the factors of the Noble Eightfold Path. That is called Samavayama. But there is another, many other discourses. One, two of them. One is in, you can find in Anguttara Nikaya. It's called Padhana Sutta. And also there is another discourse called Sang Sangra Padhana Sutta. And there's another discourse in uh, uh, Sutta Nipata that also is called Padhana Sutta. Padhana means striving. The Buddha said, because there are these four right striving. Striving has to be right. Uh, my phone everything can bila bila kan everything can bila bila okay right striving as against wrong striving instead of making wrong effort we have to make the right effort the right effort is leading to the attainment of liberation. That is one of the factors of liberation. So this for striving, one is called the number one, makes effort, arouse energy, applies his mind and striving to prevent unwholesome, unwholesome mental state from arising. Unwholesome state. We have to prevent it. In order to prevent it, we have to do various things. It would be much better to prevent rather than trying to cure it. Prevention is better than cure. It is easy. Once unwholesome mental state is arisen in the mind, it will be somewhat difficult to overcome because unwholesome mental state can take a grip in our mind because that is a normal tendency. Normally, people like to harp on unwholesome things like anger, resentment, greed, uh, restlessness, worry, and so on. It's very easy to take a grip of it and keep harping on it and keep and letting it bite over and over and over. So it will be overwhelming. And therefore, it is better to prevent it. That's called prevention. In order to prevent, there are various things I like to uh, run through all this very quickly. Second is a generate desire for the abandoning of un already arisen unwholesome mental states. Once, in spite of our 
very sincere intention to prevent unwholesome states of mind arising. Since we have developed this mental state over a long period in samsara, this has become a habit. As a habit, it is it's trying to sneak into our mind invade our mind. Then we become mindful immediately and nip in the bud. Let it go. If we don't pay attention, if we are not mindful, then it will be extremely difficult to get rid of it. And therefore that is the second effort, effort to overcome this unwholesome mental state. And the third is he generates desire for the arise uh, for unreason wholesome mental state to arise. He makes it generate desire for the unreason of uh, un, uh, un, unreason for the, for the arising of the unreason wholesome mental state to arise. That is where to make a deliberate effort to arouse wholesome mental state. And the fourth striving is called a generous desire for the uh, uh, persistence of arisen wholesome mental state. Once it is arisen, don't let it slip out of your mind. Try to keep it in your mind. Uh, so th these are the four uh, kind of striving. Let me go into little more detail. Uh, one is restraining. What do we restrain? We restrain our eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body and mind. When we do not restrain our this goal, Indriya Sangvara. Indriya Sangvara. Restraining our senses. Sangvara means restraining. There are five rest, kinds of restraining. Five kinds. One is called Sila Sangvara. Restraining through the practice of morality. And that when we uh, see an object, we uh, learn to uh, restrain our sense, uh, sense eyes uh, the, with our moral principles. Now, since if we left the eye faculty unrest, unrestrained, if the sense, eye sense is not restrained, then unwholesome mental state can arise. And uh, uh, then it will make us, uh, bring us unwholesome, heavy, burden. And therefore we have to practice Sila Sangvara. Uh, like observing principle, precept, like we have a desire to kill. And we remember that killing is very, very unwholesome. Maybe desire can arise to steal something. When we observe sealer, we always go to that principle and restrain ourselves. That is, and also we want, we have a desire to commit sexual misconduct. Then we restrain ourselves. Ourselves, we have to think of our honor, dignity, and the danger we will encounter after committing it, the punishment in going to jail and or even after that going to 
woeful state of existence. And all these things are moral principles to observe. Uh, then lying, slanderous talks, and so forth. All these are the principles that we have to observe, to, to abstain by observing seal, morality. The second restraining is called Sati Sangara. Sati means mindfulness. This particularly is important for people who practice meditation. Even when we, when we meditate, if we don't have moral principles, we cannot do our meditation very easily, successfully. It is like trying to build a house without a good foundation. So the foundation is morality. So when we have moral restraint, then we can practice see, sati sangvara. Sati means mindfulness. When we remain mindful, we will be able to see everything in a, under, this, under the eye of wisdom. That is, we see everything is impermanent, unsatisfactory, without self. Therefore, they are not mine. I am not them, they are not myself. Like this, we have to look at ourselves, look inside and try to restrain ourselves from committing unwholesome things. That is called Sati Sangvara. And there is another third Sangvara. Sangvara means restraint, third kind of restraint. is called Jnana Sangvara, wisdom. You know, <clears throat> Buddha said in many places, all the troubles, all the pain, all suffering is caused by the fools, not by the wise. That is why the Buddha asked us in Mangala Sutta at the very first beginning, he said, Aseva Nacha Balana, don't associate with the fools. They always cause you trouble, pain, suffering, and so forth. Therefore, be wise. Have wisdom. Associate with the wise people. People who understand the nature, the truth, Dhamma, and understand this life and next life and so on. Jnana uh, Sangara. Then, the Fourth is Kanti Sangara. Kanti means patience. With patience, we must restrain ourselves. For instance, uh, suppose you get angry very quickly, quick temper. When you have quick temper, you completely become completely mad at that moment. You don't know what you are doing. Some people say, oh, I'm sorry, I lost my temper. That is not an excuse. So Buddha said, Yove upaditam kotam kodam ratam bhantam udharaye tamaham saratim brumi rasmigaho itaro jano. That means if a horse driver driving a horse cart, those days they didn't, they didn't have a motor vehicle, motor car to apply brake very quickly. Those days they had uh, carts. So Buddha used this image of cart. He said, suppose a driver driving a horse cart and when the horses are drive, pulling the cart and run very quickly, if this driver can stop this fast shift running cart abruptly, very quickly. Buddha said, that is a real driver. Others are just rain holders. That means one who can stop one's own quick temper, he is a hero. He is, a, he is the strongest person who can stop the quick temper. Because of the quick temper, you might have heard all kind of 
for crimes committed, particularly killing, uh, hurting, and so forth, people very quickly. And therefore, the Buddha said, have patience at that time to stop your quick temper. That is called Khanti Sangvara, Khanti, patience, restrained by patience. The fourth, fifth is called Virya Sangvara. So today's topic is on the Virya Sangvara. Virya. So uh, when uh, we have, that is the first thing we have to do restraining. Second is abandoning. That is called uh, Pahana Padhana. Padhana. Padhana means striving. Abandoning unwholesome mental state that is already arisen by using these methods. Uh, discipline, uh, determination, and uh, it, then he obliterates it, abandon it, does not tolerate an unerisen thought of ill will. First, he overcome unerisen, already arisen thought of. Uh, greed, desire. Secondly, we overcome unarisen, have already arisen uh, mental state called ill will, anger. Uh, ill will, in Pali, English word is a very good English word, ill will. That means will is ill. <laughs> will is ill. When the will is ill, you are sick. The anger is compared to a sick, a sickness. When you overcome anger, you are well. So you have well wish. Rather than ill will, you have well wish. In order to have well wish, we have to practice metta. We wish well for all living beings, saying, may all beings be well, happy, and peaceful. When we say, may all beings be well, happy, and peaceful, our will will be well. In order to make our will well, we have to say, may all beings be well, and happy, and peaceful. So you will not be sick, having ill will. And the third is arousing unnourishing wholesome mental states. What are the mental wholesome mental states? There are many of them. Uh, there are particularly three wholesome mental states prescribed by the Buddha in the Noble Eightfold Path. They, call, they are called Samma Sankappa, wholesome mental state. What are the three wholesome mental states? Among many thousands of them, these are the three principal, main wholesome mental states. What are they? Nekkamma Sankappa. Nekkamma, Nekkamma means Letting go, renunciation, thought of renunciation, thought of generosity, thought of letting go against greed. We practice this and make effort to arouse this thought of letting go, thought of generosity. And we must keep it repeating again and again. The Buddha said, uh, once you have uh, arouse the holds a mental state, then you keep repeating it. This is called mm, 
so then the next one is uh, the mental force and mental state in order to uh, arouse and arouse holds a mental state we have to make effort this is not physical effort uh, but weight lifting and boxing and playing games and not that kind of energy but this is a mental energy it is in in the buddha's teaching buddha teaching uh, always um, advises us to develop a mental state mental energy so we cultivate our mental energy to arouse wholesome mental deliberately by force we must arouse the wholesome mental state one un once unwholesome mental state is gone to fill that gap we must arouse wholesome mental state See, one of them is generosity nekamma sankappa second is the avya pada sankappa against ill will we cultivate good will by practicing metta metta is called avya pada sankappa vyapada means anger avyapada means not anger not anger means not only not getting angry but also we have to develop metta loving friendliness loving friendliness towards all living beings in all ten directions <clears throat> see then the last effort we have to make is to maintain and sustain the whole sum mental state that is already arisen so buddha said punyanche puruso kaira kaira tena puna punam tammi chandam kaira tha sukho punya sa uchayo when you have done something wholesome for instance you arouse your wholesome mental state like practicing developing metta once you start practicing metta you do it again and again and again so when once you start practicing generosity keep doing it again and again and again once you start practicing metta keep doing it again and again and again and the last this if you practice the last thought that the buddha prescribed in the noble eightfold path is avihingsa sankap avihingsa means non cruelty non total non cruelty we should not think of cruel thoughts we should not be cruel to others even in our thought uh, actually it is the thought that makes us the cruelty is in the mind so we create the cruelty in the mind and then we execute it through words and deeds and therefore that is another wholesome mental state non cruelty means compassion so we have met generosity metta and karuna karuna means compassion metta means loving friendliness sometimes some people say loving kindness i don't think that is appropriate because kindness is expressed by the word uh, non cruelty uh, what do avi hinsa and uh, avi hinsa should be separate separated from uh, metta so metta is one karuna is another and we should not repeat karuna twice when we say loving kindness and then again compassion we repeat the same thing same mental state therefore it is better for us to say metta uh, to say, to translate metta as uh, loving friendliness because the word metta comes from the root mitta mitta means friend in sanskrit mitra mitra's nature is called maitri metta's nature is metta mitta's nature is metta pali met, mitta 
Sanskrit Mitra. So, so Metta means loving friendliness. Then, uh, Abhihimsa means compassion. So, we, once we have developed arouse in our mind, generosity, friendliness, compassion, keep repeating it. If we cannot do it, think about it again and again. Thammi chandam kairata. If you don't do it physically, verbally, this holds a mental state. Uh, you know, physically you don't do something or some to express your compassion, loving friendliness, generosity. You keep thinking about it. Buddha said, if you don't do it physically, verbally, think about it. Thammi chandam kairata. And that also we can do with great effort. It's not that that very big thing for us to think of wholesome things, compassionate things, loving things, generous thought generating in our mind again and again. All this needs very great uh, effort because these things don't come to us very naturally. We have to cultivate them deliberately. For that, we have to make a special effort. That is what the Buddha did, Siddhartha Gautama, uh, before attaining enlightenment. He defeated all the armies of Mara. Armies of Mara he defeated. Uh, and uh, this army so Mara, uh, Buddha listed in uh, Sutta Nipata. Army so Mara. And these Maras are personified in our uh, Buddhist literature. But they are mental states. And Buddha gave the list of these ten Maras, ten Mara battalions, or ten Mara armies, armies. First is Buddha said, sensual pleasures are your first army. He called the Mara. Sensual pleasures is your first army. Second is called discontent. When you even abandon sensual pleasure, you may have a discontent. Living alone, practicing meditation can cause discontent. And uh, hunger and thirst are the third army. Hunger and thirst. And the fourth is called craving for various things. The fifth is dullness and drowsiness. Fifth. And the sixth is called uh, covered eyes. Sixth. The fear. Then the, the seventh is called your doubt. Eighth is denigration and pride. Ninth is the gain, praise and honor and wrongly obtain fame. This all together called ninth army. Tenth is extolling oneself and looking down upon others. Attukkansana Paravambhana. These are the ten armies. And it is not easy for the person who does not make effort to overcome these ten armies. This you can find in Sutta Nipata, Padhana Sutta. 
Madhana Sutta. And Buddha said finally, this is your army of the misconduct of the dark one. Weakling does not conquer them. That means those who don't have effort, don't make effort, cannot conquer them. But those who have, those who make effort, try hard, think hard, rescue themselves, and so forth, following all the things that I already mentioned, if somebody follows them, that person can conquer these 10 armies. If you make effort, you can conquer all these armies. And then that is the whole, that then that is the person who gains bliss of emancipation, bliss of emancipation, free from all the difficulties, pain and suffering. That means, as I mentioned in the at the beginning, when you practice, when you make effort you end up in attaining liberation, experiencing bliss of Nibbana. And therefore, friends, make effort in your practice. And uh, I think this may be enough for our Dharma talk. And uh, then we have to practice meditation. Unfortunately, my other uh, screen that I that I want to share with you is not here. I'm using little laptop. <laughs> I'm in somebody's house today. Came for lunch, and just before the lunch, I don't wanted to give you this. Uh, regular Zoom talk, and I hope you all uh, understood something and remember them. And now let us spend uh, our rest of the time till 11 o'clock uh, meditating, okay? As I normally recite, I recite the metta passages and you listen and then we all meditate together. May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere. Neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother who risks her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate for all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hatred or resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down, or whenever awake. One should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision. Removing desire for sensual pleasures, one comes never again to birth in the home. Okay, friends, with this thought of loving friendliness, we practice meditation. As I mentioned in the past, let us sit in a straight, upright position, whether you are sitting on a chair, on the floor, it doesn't matter where. Keep the body straight. Don't lean against your back support. And breathe deeply until your lungs are full of air. And breathe entire breath out 
until lungs are completely empty of air. Next moment you breathe in, you can have lung full of oxygen. And then breathe out entire amount of breath, air. During that time, you build up carbon dioxide, which dilate your arteries, veins, little capillaries, and then blood flow will, the flow will be very smooth, and you gain very calm, peaceful mental state. Mind becomes calm, clear, peaceful, so that uh, uh, you will see yourself. You will see all that I mentioned, if you remember, very, very clearly. And that would help us to develop our own mental state. So I stop talking and we meditate together. I don't have a bell, but I will say what I normally say at the end. Okay.
Thank you, Bill. In front of Ban Hari. By means of these meritorious deeds, may I never join with the foolish. May I join always with the wise until the time I attain Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering. May the fear struck be free from fear. May the grieving be free from grief. So too may all beings be. From the highest realm of existence to the lowest, may all beings ascend in these realms with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. <clears throat> Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Okay. Sadhu, sadhu. Thank you. Thank you, Bhante Ji. Very interesting talk. Thank you. Thank you, Bhante. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Thank you, Bhante. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you, Bhante. Okay. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you. Uh, I want to... Blessings, Bante. <laughs> Blessings to all of you. See you again. Thank you. We've lost Bante. Bante. <laughs> Hi everyone. Bye. Bye. Be Good well. Day. Be happy. Be peaceful. Same to you. Same to you. Bye. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bundy's not coming back.